Um, the title of my talk is uh, to ref sequence, the uh, re ref sequence or resequence the Ariza. That is a question. And I think if uh, Shakespeare was alive today and he was uh, in the genome-based uh, economy, he might actually ask this question. And I think this is a question a lot of people ask. It's uh, once a reference genome is, is sequenced, like for Ariza, there's a big rush to say, Okay, that can be the, the actually the template for all resequencing activities for that entire uh, genus. And uh, today I'd like to argue that that's not the case and that I think we uh, need to back up a, uh, one step, generate reference genomes for um, all of the uh, ARISA species, and then you can resequence uh, until the cows come home. So the um, the uh, outline of my talk is to uh, discuss a little bit about the uh, about rice and the importance of rice, uh, the genus Ariza and the Ariza Map Alignment Project, uh, Ariza genome dynamics. I'm going to give you some examples of, of the of the dynamics that are going on in the genus, um, and then uh, discuss a uh, uh, a a method that we've uh, developed an interim method to sequence uh, use next gen sequencing to uh, sequence large eukaryotic genomes using a, a back pooling approach. Before I uh, start, I'll just uh, initially thank my, uh, all my colleagues and collaborators. Uh, all this work was funded by the National Science Foundation. Uh, Hiron Kim and Raju Jetty were involved in developing the majority of the, the resources that I'll talk about today in collaboration with uh, Scott Jackson, Lincoln Stein, Philip Samagill, and Doreen Ware. And Bonnie Hurwitz and Dave Kuderna were involved in the rearrangement index. I'll talk about that. And then Steve Roundsley uh, and uh, um, uh, collaborators at 454 Life Sciences um, um, worked on us to uh, develop this uh, next-gen sequencing approach. Okay, first, uh, about rice. Rice is the, the most important food crop in the world. It feeds um, about half the population. It's that half that is expected to double in 20 to 30 years. So it's, uh, um, and we, we need to essentially meet that, uh, that population increase uh, using, uh, uh, by, by improving uh, rice cultivars. And simply put, it means that we, uh, um, we need to produce approximately about 40% more rice by 2030. And this increased demand will have to be met from less land with less water and less labor and fewer chemicals. Um, uh, the, uh, the concept here is to try to generate a new type of rice, which would be called a super green rice, which uh, is uh, the green meaning it's uh, less um, environmentally damaging by not requiring as much nitrogen or water, but, uh, but doubling its yield potential. In the, uh, in the rice community, we have an uh, uh, initiative, a worldwide initiative um, called uh, Rice 2020. And it's a, uh, it's a call for an internationally coordinated effort to functionally uh, characterize the rice genome. And um, using uh, a number of different um, uh, foci here, uh, developing uh, enabling tools and genetic resources, assigning biological functions to all genes, so on and so forth. Um, um, also um, studying natural variation in ARISA and its, and its wild relatives. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you about Ariza. This is a phylogenetic tree that was developed by uh, Ga et al. in uh, 19, about 10 years ago. Um, and the um, Ariza sativa is the, um, the genus uh, and species that um, all of us eat. It has um, a couple subspecies, uh, um, Indica and Japonica, those are the, the most prominent ones. Um, but it turns out there's uh, eight other, other uh, AA genome type um, species in the uh, in uh, Ariza, and uh, the majority of them are wild, except there's one uh, additional one that's cultivated only in West Africa called Glabarima. It has some very nice drought tolerant properties and uh, good uh, um, disease resistance. In addition to the AA genome types, there are nine other genome types within the um, genus, um, and uh, we have a total of uh, six diploids and four polyploids. Um, we have 24 total species. There's wide distribution in habit, habitats around the world. Uh, there's 10 distinct genome types and a 3.6 genome size variation. The wild relatives of rice are agronomically inferior grasses, but contain a virtually untapped reservoir 
of genetic variation that could be used for crop improvement. This is cultivated rice here. There's Galabarima. Uh, these are some of the wild species. This is Rufa pogon. Uh, Longestemonon is very similar. And uh, this is one of the, the highest uh, biomass uh, relatives of, of rice called Alta, and it's found in uh, South America. Here are some of the useful traits that have been identified in some of these wild relatives. Uh, majority of them are resistances to insect, uh, uh, in various insects. There's also a drought avoidance, uh, drought tolerance, and um, uh, as well as salt tolerance. So. Um, we uh, initiated a project about uh, six years ago, five years ago, to, um, to um, better understand the, the, um, the entire genus, to devel essentially develop a genome level closed experimental system to uh, study the genus ari uh, Ariza that could be used as a platform to study a number of different topics from positional cloning, genome organization, evolution, to uh, crop improvement and gene regulatory networks. The objectives were to generate uh, 14 high quality uh, BAP libraries um, from representing the uh, 10 genome types, um, generate um, essentially fingerprint and sequence maps of all these libraries, align them to the uh, reference genome sequence which was um, published in 2005, and then mine the data and present the data. This is the, uh, these are the voucher plants that we used. We have a, a set of uh, of uh, clonally propagated plants that were used for this project. And uh, the voucher uh, plants are uh, located around the world, including uh, Erie in, uh, in the Philippines, two sites in China, one in France, one in Taiwan, and one in Arizona. This is uh, essentially the, the, um, uh, the outcome of, of the, the, uh, the resource. Um, what you see here are um, physical maps from uh, representatives of all the diploid uh, um, Ariza species. Um, on the right is the pseudomolecule for chromosome 1. On the left are the contigs. The blue lines represent back-end sequences that are mapped to the pseudomolecules. So again, uh, so all the resources are, are available at uh, www.omap.org. Again, 14 libraries and physical maps. And we also have um, uh, about 1.5 million back-end sequences, 93% of which are, are paired in. So you can, um, as expected, you see a tremendous amount of collinearity, but at the same time you see um, a, a, a large amount of structural variation. And um, it's not all evident here, but the deeper you drill down into these contexts, there's, um, you see expansions, contractions, uh, and inversions um, galore. So some of the um, um, outcomes of this, uh, this work uh, are, are listed here. I'm going to talk about three of them here. Uh, we've studied uh, repeat content, transposal element history, and the effect on genome size variation. In uh, Australiensis, it's an EE genome diploid. It has a, a genome size of about um, one gig. The, the reference genome is about 400 megabases. This, um, more than doubling of the genome sizes was caused by an explosion of uh, three transposable elements that occurred about five million years ago um, post-speciation. Um, this system allows you to um, uh, look at centromeres um, across a, um, a, uh, a phylogeny. So we have a nice collaboration with Jiming Jiang where we're studying the uh, chromosome 8 centromere of, of, uh, of Ariza and we essentially have clones bridging uh, the centromeres and uh, um, are analyzing that data now. Um, okay, so now I'll tell you a little bit about um, genome flux and, and now generation sequencing. Okay, this is a physical map of Ariza punctata. It's a BB genome um, um, wild relative, and uh, it's a, uh, we're proposing, um, uh, we have a proposal in uh, right now at uh, JGI to actually generate a reference sequence for punctata because this, um, we're, we're pushing this as a, uh, an important evolutionary outgroup for um, the all the AA genome relatives of rice. What you can see uh, here is again, tremendous amount of collinearity, but now you can see uh, much more detail on the types of uh, structural variation that you can find. Uh, here's an inversion here. We um, proved that this inversion was, was real based on uh, using uh, fluorescence in C2 hybridization. If we had to um, use fish or other methods like that, 
Um, it would take us um, um, you know, tens of years to figure out all the structural variation um, in this species. So what, we've, uh, what we did was we developed what we call a rearrangement index. And uh, the idea was to computationally identify rearrangements between wild rice genomes and the ERISA genome using back-end sequences from these three AA genome species and the BB genome species. And this was led by Lincoln Stein at, when he was at Cold Spring Harbor. The idea is to look at pairs of back ends and uh, ask the question, do they map uh, at a predicted distance apart or are they further or closer together than you would normally predict? The, the outcome of this uh, analysis with the back ends was that we identified about 751 expansions, 790 contractions, 88 inversions, and 383 translocations. When we focused on the, uh, <clears throat> just looking at the expansions and contractions, what we did was we uh, isolated all the, the backs and sized them on chef gels. And we found that um, um, looking at these um, expansions and contractions, that um, we see, a, 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 if you total it up, you get somewhere between 40 to 50 megabases of the genome uh, of, uh, let's say, Rufa pogon is, is different from um, the sativa reference genome sequence. So that rep represents about 10, 10 to 15% of this genome, of the Rufa pogon genome, or Glabrima or Navara, are uh, uh, essentially completely different relative to the reference genome sequence. <laughs> We're, we're, uh, we call that, uh, so in spite of this collinearity, you see this um, uh, expansion and contraction. And we have evidence now that uh, it could, uh, this expansion and contraction could be as much as 100 megabases of, of each of those genomes relative to the reference genome sequence. An example, uh, uh, a, a, um, uh, a detailed example is um, a comparison between Japonica and Indica just at the back level right here. We sequenced uh, two, two uh, Syntenic backs and everything in uh, gray is what is um, shared, everything else is, uh, uh, is not shared. And it turns out actually that there's more unique in sativa than what is conserved in, uh, between the two species. About 114 KBs of uh, uh, sequences conserved include 16 annotated genes, two annotated transposable elements. On the sativa side, 116 KBs are unique. It can, it's pr primarily associated with um, transposable elements. However, there's four non-orthologous genes that have full-length cDNA evidence that are expressed. In Glabrima, 34 KBs are unique, including three non-orthologous genes and seven non-orthologous transposable elements. We've now um, uh, um, have a project to generate um, genome sequence for the short arms of chromosome three across all of the diploid ERISA. Three was the, gene, uh, the chromosome that we sequenced as part of the, the rice uh, genome sequencing project and it's going to be a target for functional characterization of all the genes across these genomes. So right now, um, these, um, we, we also included a, a polyploid uh, minuta with, which has a BB and a CC subgenome. So we're able to actually study the BB genome in, both in a diploid and a polyploid environment as, and the same thing for the C genomes. So I just wanted to show you um, a comparison of uh, uh, kind of the essentially um, percent identity across a lineable sequence of the uh, ERISA chromosome three short arms. And this is uh, four A genomes um, and punctata. And just showing you that there is, uh, 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 this is the, these are the SNP rates and uh, when we look at punctata, um, it's quite diverse. This is um, essentially along the chromosome arm and this is percent identity. We've also looked at, um, uh, um, well, it also, and so that's 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 um, sequence that is alignable. Um, it turns out that the um, the genomes are also uh, between 30 to 40 percent repetitive, and those those uh, we we have no alignment in in those regions. We did a, uh, a, a preliminary analysis by looking at uh, gene content shared and uh, and uh, unique um, between Japonica, Glabrima, and Punctata. And um, uh, this is on chromosome three. Um, there's about 2,000 genes that are shared across all three species. Um, Galabrima has uh, approximately 109 unique, uh, Punctata 551 unique, and uh, 156 that are unique to, specifically to Japonica. So this could be kind of considered maybe a core gene set for a chromosome uh, three short arm, and then these would be unique, uh, some, some associated with uh, adaptation to, to different environments or domestication. 
Okay, the, the final story is um, um, about um, the uh, ADH1 locus uh, to look, uh, let's look at a little bit more on, on genome dynamics. Uh, we um, sequenced this um, uh, at, at the back level, um, the uh, ADH1 uh, locus across uh, the entire uh, diploid phylogeny and this and uh, analyzed it in, in, in um, quite a bit of detail. Uh, this is uh, japonica all the way down to uh, granulata. I don't expect you to look at all those symbols, but, um, uh, and I'll skip this too, this just shows a number of genes that we, we looked at and, and so on and so forth. But we uh, um, identified several um, perturbations to syntony, um, um, identified a dynamic um, evolution of genome families, of gene families, um, um, transposable element mediated uh, gene movement and also large physical arrangements. I'll just run through that quickly. Uh, here is uh, an example of the FBOX gene in this particular region. Uh, you can, uh, it basically goes from uh, you know, one gene in granulata all the way up to uh, 14 uh, 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 copies in sativa. Um, 12 have uh, full length cDNA support and uh, two have been uh, knocked out by transposable elements in this region. So this is kind of the diversity that you can see here. Everything is in yellow right here. Um, we identified uh, one F FBOX member that's present in um, all, f all of the AA genome species but missing in, in, Japana, in Japonica indication, indicating the deletion of that particular uh, FBOX gene there. And, uh, uh, there was a cluster of genes between these two, uh, FBOX genes between these two elements here. They're shared all the way down to the, uh, the uh, CC genome. They're absent here. Um, however, we, uh, looking at the polyploid genomes, we're, we're able to find um, uh, an FBOX gene that, has, uh, that is um, an ortholog of one of the genes here. Um, and it indicates that uh, this, this cluster of genes was present at, at one time, but then has uh, since uh, been deleted uh, throughout evolution. Uh, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm running out of time, so I'll just skip the next two examples. But the whole point of all this is to, is to say that the, there's a tremendous amount of dynamic genome evolution across these, these species. And um, um, in order to harness the, uh, the power of these species, we're, uh, we're um, interested in uh, um, trying to uh, generate genome sequence from uh, all of these relatives um, in order to improve cultivated rice. So I'll tell you, uh, uh, in, in conclusion, uh, we've generated a, uh, a genus level experimental system to uh, investigate fundamental questions in evolutionary biology and functional genomics. Um, we now have immediate access to any region of the ARISA genome for evolutionary and functional studies. We've begun to establish a, a catalog of structural variation and uh, preliminary analysis of, of the chromosome 3 shows that about 5% of the annotated genes in sativa and glabrima are unique and that 60% of the intact LTR transposable elements in these species inserted after speciation. Um, and then gene family death, movement, uh, transposable element insertions, and so on and so forth have all played um, roles in, um, in uh, genome evolution of ERISA. So are these dramatic, are these dramatic changes the result of adaptation to new environments, domestication, or are they neutral? So based on these um, combined analysis, we propose that the uh, rice, uh, Ossetiva ref sequence is not a sufficient resequencing template. Uh, for the wild relatives of rice, and we should first generate de novo ref sequences for all A8 genome species, as well as ref sequences for the nine remaining uh, genome types. Once completed, these uh, 16 new reference sequences would serve as sequencing templates to efficiently capture um, the majority of allelic variation that exists within the genus. Okay, so I have about, uh, I think, maybe three or four more minutes, and I'll just tell you about our, our approach. We have a, uh, we organized what's called an International ERISA Map Alignment Project. Uh, it's a consortium of, um, of teams around the world um, that, that all work on rice. And we've had two meetings so far, one in Scuba, one in, in Jeju. And there are three priorities. One is, again, to generate reference sequences for all eight A genome species at the moment, uh, generate um, important uh, 
mapping populations for phenotyping studies, and identify naturally occurring populations of rhizo species for diversity conservation, population, and evolutionary analyses. The uh, first objective is, is, uh, was inspired by a recently published uh, um, um, study um, where they sequenced the 12 genomes of, of, uh, of uh, Drosophila. And uh, the, the, I like the quote at the top, and uh, the, everybody in this audience would probably agree. How many uh, genome sequences do you need to characterize a model organism? Uh, for Drosophila, um, Heidi says, a dozen is a good start. So in, uh, in the last couple slides, uh, Steve Roundsley and I at, at Arizona um, um, we're, we've been thinking about how to use next-gen sequencing to actually generate reference genome sequences for, for um, larger eukaryotic genomes uh, on the size of 400 to uh, one, 1 gig in size. So um, since we have this uh, great physical map resource, we've developed a, a back pooling approach that kind of uh, blends uh, old school physical mapping with new school um, generation sequencing. So here's a depiction of the short arm of chromosome 3. Here are there are con takes. We um, select a minimum tiling path of back clones across the genome, pool approximately 30 backs. We can barcode these. Then you can use, we, we've been using 454 exclusively right now. Um, you generate um, um, long reads and paired in reads uh, for each of the pools. Then you can assemble them. Uh, into scaffolds using uh, 454 paired end uh, uh, sequences, and then uh, we can generate them into super scaffolds using our, our back end sequence resource. So, we did this uh, uh, pilot experiment uh, for uh, Barthi, which is the progenitor of cultivated rice for, for uh, the short arm of chromosome 3. We had uh, six 3 meg pools, 28 overlapping backs. We did uh, titanium, and uh, we also did long, long paired end. This was uh, before the titanium paired end sequencing came out. Uh, these are the, the statistics. Um, we had an uh, assembly in three stages, which, I'll, uh, which I kind of described briefly. Uh, and this, this was the, uh, uh, the final result. Um, after the stage three BAM, BAM is scaffolding, uh, we had 44 scaffolds. The N50 scaffold size was three mags. The largest scaffold was six mags. And we had a total scaffold length of about 18 and a half mags. So to assess the quality of this, um, first we look at macro scale alignment um, against the rice reference sequence. It showed no large rearrangements. Uh, we looked at overlaps between pools, and um, um, it turned out that there was essentially one error every uh, uh, every five kbs, which um, is close to the uh, Br uh, Bermuda standard uh, for finished genomes. And uh, of the um, 3,100 detectable orthologous genes between Barthi and, and uh, Sativa, 75% uh, were completely covered by a single contig, and 92% have greater than 90% coverage. So we just recently published, in the, published this um, method in the journal RICE. So we, um, at, we, after that presentation yesterday when PacBio, if we had a PacBio instrument, we could just do this immediately, but it's gonna be maybe a couple years before we can get that working. So we think uh, in the interim, uh, we, we definitely have a solution to um, generating uh, reference genome sequences um, of larger eukaryotic genomes using, using this back pooling approach. Not everybody has that type of a resource. Fortunately, we do, and uh, we're in a strong position to be able to do that, and we hope we can partner with uh, JDI, JGI to try to prove that uh, this is gonna work on a, on a, on a whole genome. So back to the top priorities. Um, uh, uh, in terms of the AA genome species, um, O. glabarima was recently funded by the National Science Foundation to use this particular approach, and there are applications around the world for the remaining AA genome species with former collaborators that were involved in the, um, the reference genome sequencing project of Japonica rice. Um, the mapping populations are, have been developed or are in progress, and the collections are ongoing. Thank you very much.